why don't we do some intros first? So in the room here, uh, I am Christina. I'm the founder of Bike Lane Uprising. I'm Ace Man. I guess I'm the bike messenger guest for today or this evening. Uh, you guess. Yes. OK. Yeah. <laughs> and then we also have Ben in the corner that's helping um, with some audio. Uh, he wanted to use the fun microphone, and I was not for it. And surprise, surprise, it didn't work. So, uh, um, uh, but we let him test it out. Uh, I know Ace through uh, just everything Chicago. It's kind of hard not to know Ace if you bike in Chicago. And uh, I had, you know, he just knows so much about biking, so much about building bikes, just all of the stuff. And I think that, I think you kind of take some of that for granted. And I try to pull that information out of you and get it into a format on like, you know, social media and, you know, bike lane uprising blogs and, you know, events and, you know, cause there's just so many people that would really benefit from all that knowledge that you have. But uh, the thing about that is some people like Ace don't really like writing things. Yeah. <laughs> and I think it was, June of last year, I asked you to write a blog about this topic, about how to be a courier. And um, we had some notes. We had some notes that were started. And this is as far as the blog article got. So I was like, you know what? Let's just do a video. And um, Ace was kind enough to agree to it. So here we are. And again, we're using this as a little bit of a, you know, just kind of a, you know, a walkthrough to see you know, how some of these systems work. But, um, you know, if you guys have questions about, you know, what you want to learn or something specific to your city or your own use case, feel free to jump in. Um, I like to say that if you have a question or feel one way, oftentimes other people have those same, you know, questions, they might feel too uncomfortable to ask them. Um, and if you've joined in um, just recently, you'll notice in the chat window, um, we had asked some folks where they're from. So feel free to add what city you're calling in from. And that might help us, you know, kind of, uh, you know, keep things, you know, specific to what you need. All right. Yeah. So one of the things that I had asked Ace to do is to write this article that was never written. And uh, I asked for uh, the category of let's try to do a 101 on what people need to know if they're thinking about being a bike courier. And there's kind of three categories. There's somebody that has never done it whatsoever. You don't even know where to start type of thing. And then category two is, you know, you've kind of tiptoed into it. You really don't know what you don't know, but like you've done it. Um, and what were things that maybe somebody like that might need to know? And then all the way to the other side, like you're, you know, how do you go full tilt and just really get into it and really dive deep into it? So um, based on those three categories, where would, you know, the folks that are on the call now, where would you see yourself in the, you know, haven't even tried it and are interested? Are you, you've done it a little bit and you're trying to get better at it? Or are you like, let's go, you know, let's go full tilt. I don't see any chat window session. There might be a delay. Ben, do you see stuff? Oh, you do? No, 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 oh, there's a half second okay. delay though. Oh, there is. Okay, never delivered, uh, but want to start a career business. Oh, so you want to start your own, okay. So Jacob, are you thinking about, you know, like you being the sole courier or are you hoping to have more people help you? Uh, and then uh, another one, I'm sort of LV level two, but I want to be level three. I've done Jimmy John's uh, bike delivery. Okay. I've also done Jimmy John's bike delivery a long mm -hmm. time ago. So. All right. Uh, complete newbie. All right. Good, good, good. So we have all three categories. Um, that's good. Yeah. So I think, why don't we start out with level one? Um, somebody that's never done it before, what should they know? And also, I'm going to call Ace up. Well, he did some notes today on napkins. I, 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 I did them yesterday, <laughs> not today. Oh, I'm sorry. Yesterday, not today. <laughs> all right. 
uh, I probably would keep my day job and would try to target business to business deliveries, made some good um, contacts uh, in Ann Arbor, A2, uh, at the cargo bike shop. Okay. All right. So why don't we kick it off with level one? Uh, well, well, let's go through it a little different. Okay. Uh, there's basically three types of messengers. There's going to be your regular messengers, which you've seen in all the movies and stuff like that. You're going to work for a delivery service, and stuff like that. There's going to be what are called base messengers, which would be like your Jimmy John's, your pot bellies, your dominoes and that. And then you would have what's really big now are your appsters, you know, people running the apps, the Uber Eats, the Grubhub, the Postmates and the Instacart. So those are kind of your three main ones. Okay. And so from there, you can be any level. You can be a newbie, you can be mid, you can be, you know, all out professional trying to get bigger and stuff like that. So it's kind of your choice of what you're going to do. I would say mainly in the bigger cities, you're going to have a regular bike messenger companies or whatever. If you're in a small, I'm not sure where everybody's from, but more the smaller, you may Chicago, not have regular. Detroit. Yeah, you may not have a smaller one, but you're definitely going to have a lot of base places, you know, Jimmy John's, Pop Bellies, the Domino's. They, they all are always hiring for bike messengers and stuff like that. So would, if somebody works at a Jimmy John's or, you know, something like that, would they be like a W2 employee? Yep, that's okay. where we're going to get into right. next. All right. So if, if you work for a regular bike messenger service or you're working for a base messenger service, you know, the franchise and that you're going to be a W2 employee. Okay. That, and you're probably going to have regular shifts, you know, work, you know, nine to five or whatever, or three to seven, whatever you'll have like that. Which, is, which a lot of the people on the apps, they're going to, you know, you got the flexibility. Hey, I want to work right now, turn it on. You know, what's nice about the apps is there's business all the time now, especially in the morning, there's a lot of coffee runs and stuff like that. Lunch is always- That big. blows my mind that people get coffee delivered. Yeah. Uh, especially a like espressos, when you yes. see that as an option to get delivered, it's like, that's gotta be nasty by the time you get it. Starbucks is booming. Starbucks that's is insane. booming, so many people. <laughs> So many people order Starbucks for Uber Eats and Post. Oh my right? God. Yeah. I had no idea. Yeah, exactly. And then also about the apps, the flexibility is great, but also you're a 1099, okay? So they're not taking out any taxes or anything like mm -hmm. that, okay? You're going to get this check and you're like, wow, man, I'm making really, really good money, okay? So just remember that. You're going to pay it at the end of the year. The taxes. Okay? The taxes, yes. I have a, I've known a lot of people who started out doing this and they knew what a 1099 is and they, you know, they, they have it. And then the tax time came around, they were so used to getting a refund or whatever, and they're actually having to pay. So just remember that on it. All the apps have a really good, you know, tax accounting thing. So they'll tell you everything you need to know about it. Also, what's really good about the apps, you know, Uber Eats and Grubhub, they can do same day or next day payouts for you. So, you know, you need, you need money by tomorrow to pay your rent. You know, you need 50, 60 bucks, hundred bucks work tonight it'll take take a fee out of it each one's kind of a little different but that's a very nice option for them the folks on the call do you guys have your own bikes there's going to be a little bit of because that okay. that's one thing um that you might want to think about too because mm -hmm. there's you know, there's some places that I'm noticing they're actually supplying bikes yeah um and gear so yeah. do you have any examples of companies that supply bikes and gear? Not, I, I've heard that it's happening. I, you, you had talked about the Domino's Pizza was do, doing that. A lot of them will not supply it well from what I've been told. It's just there's legal reasons mm -hmm. for it and stuff. Who's going to upkeep it and stuff like that. A lot of places, though, Jimmy John's, Pop Bellies, Fox Trots, you will have like the store bike. So it's just there in case someone has flats, someone's bikes messed up that, you know, you jump on that beater and you beat it even more. <laughs> so that, that, that always happens a lot, but I, yeah, it, you told me about the Domino's having the e-bikes now. Yeah. That, yeah. The one um, in the West Loop has West a fleet Loop. of about four, four. I want to say e-bikes. Right. They look very nice. nice. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, after posting about mm -hmm. that, it sounds like a few of the locations around Chicago, they have e-bikes. E yeah. And then Gitter, 
uh, they supply e-bikes, yeah. I think, as well. I think there's, like, a few different things, like maybe you rent or something, the different bikes. Yeah. yeah. With, with Git Gitter, it's kind of a fast food. Not a fast, like, convenience store food kind of mm -hmm. stuff. They, they do it. I, their main thing is, like, under 30 minutes or stuff like that. Yeah. That, you're going to be an employee. They have all e-bikes or whatever, which are really nice and stuff like that. So they're just kind of zooming in and that, and then they have a really short delivery area that you'd be, I'd be more considered like a base, you know, you're just going from the store out and back or whatever, where a regular messenger, you should start the day either at the office or whatever, pick up your radio. A lot of places now are letting you take your radios home with you, which is really nice. What does that do? Uh, so then you don't have to go into the office, grab it from the office, and go back out. So saves you a little bit of time. Saves you a lot of time. And then the radio, you're typically getting what type of calls on that? Uh, I mean, it just, just depends on you know how busy you are. If you're a regular one, especially downtown areas, you're going to do a lot more paper. You know, a lot of lawyers, a lot of medical facilities, a lot of architectures, stuff like that. Not not as much food. Whereas the other ones. Obviously, the franchisees, the base ones, it's almost all fast food places, and the apps are almost all food and that. Postmates does a, a little. Postmates and Instacart, you go into the stores and getting stuff or whatever, you know, so it's kind of a little different on that. Uh, and what was I going to say? Mainly on the food ones, you will get more tips than the, than the other ones and that, but they are, uh, places are starting to tip more on non-food stuff, which is really nice. Mm -hmm. And that, so that's really cool. Do people tend to tip in cash or just on the app? Uh, it just depends. Yeah. You know, I would say some, some do that, you know, I, I wouldn't say there's really a line or a reason and that to it. Yeah, so we'll just do it that, because some people know that, you know, given the cash, it's going straight to you and that. A couple of the apps back in the day, there's, been a couple of lawsuits about it where they were incorporating the tip into your pay. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you're supposed to get, you know, you know, $20 on this thing, but, oh, they got a $4 tip. So they're only giving you $16 plus the $4. I see. So that's something to be mindful of. And they're kind of, they're, they're cutting back on them able to do it. Some places where, you know, a person was get, doing a very large tip, you know, $10, $20. So in their mind, they're getting it a lot faster and stuff like that. It's a priority. People would do it there. And then later on, they would go back in and take it out or whatever. So people would say that they were going to give a big tip. Yes. And then, because you can kind of say which <laughs> orders you're going to take and which ones you're not going to take. Yes. Right? Yeah, on the apps. And then, so they kind of bait people, people with the larger tips yeah, yes. and then pull it back, back afterwards. Yes. Like evil. Evil, yeah. Right. That's on the apps. <laughs> so just be, um, be mindful of that. And how long have you, uh, how long have you been a courier? Uh, you know, we said 10 years. Yeah, 10 years, day. like, full-time is my full, like, that was okay. my job. Probably, you know, another 16, 18 years, you okay. know, just part-time, regular, doing the, you know, on the side and stuff like that. So, and what types of places have you delivered for? Uh, again, I've, I've done regular, you know, regular messenger services or just all the offices, stuff like that, you know, medical facilities, lawyers, architectures uh used to do a lot of architecture work a lot of plans of the big tubes because you you get trusted with with those or whatever and so they a lot of times you know other ones would crush them or whatever <laughs> so that was it that uh then i've done you know part-time i've done like jimmy john's uh fox trots a big uh kind of bougie 7-eleven here in chicago that is spreading out i've done for them and then i've done the apps you know I've done all, all through that Uber Eats, Grubhub, Postmates, Instacart. Uh, there's a dispensary co-op that I work out of, you know, working for all the dispensaries, which is really nice. So that's a little, little different, a little on the <laughs> experimental side at the moment. So oh, working on that. How much weight do you typically carry? Uh, again, it's just, it, it would vary. Yeah. If it's something that's really going to be heavy or stuff like that, uh, if you're doing regular, regular, you know, 
the dispatchers know who's good and stuff like that and who can probably carry it so they're, <laughs> they're gonna not give it to newbies and stuff like that so they're triaging uh yeah okay. well no they just know you know they want a successful yeah. delivery and stuff <laughs> like that so they'll do that you know um doing you know for, for franchise the base uh jimmy john's always I, I worked in the loop the downtown area was uh black friday all of the big stores the retails uh used us as catering and stuff oh, like that yeah so we'd be you know you'd be taking you know 500 600 orders of like just you know box either the straight up box lunches or just the subs just oh, wow. like that yeah i and have that, never even considered that, considered that yeah oh. probably the main thing on weight is especially like our catering order people ordered bottled water the big like stacks of bottled water and you gotta put that on your bike or whatever that is heavy and really a pain in the ass so, <laughs> so that's one of them but it it just varies the apps now the food it's all pretty light yeah. and stuff like that so not that heavy or whatever. do you get multiple orders at the same time I do. kind of at the same time you can okay. you can they frown upon it but you can work the system if you need to or whatever. how uh, uh, yeah I'd rather not do that okay. I don't, I don't <laughs> want to get kicked off the apps and I don't want that loophole okay but so it's a loophole it's, it's not I, a process kind of, yeah okay but but like on the franchisees the ones you know you would you would do they usually have kind of sectors or areas when you come in or you know the pizza delivery they'll give you four or five pizzas to deliver get them you know that area stuff like that and they usually have a order of how you know all right this person's next this person's next or you know hey this person's going this way uh, two other orders came in they're going that way he gets them there's usually some different processes that each franchisee uses or that if you're doing for a regular messenger service you know that they can also where usually it's point to point with the regular one but also a good dispatcher that knows that hey something else is in this building or something else is along the way that comes up and they'll drop it on you also when you're doing regular so that's just more of a good dispatcher and, st and stuff like that for regular i said if you're doing base the franchisees you'll usually take multiple orders in that and then the uber eats the grub hubs kind of but usually you can't how long is a shift normally uh like if you're base okay yeah if you're a base they're usually the lunch rush or whatever mm -hmm. the downtowns uh but they could be you know a six hour shift usually six hours. yeah six to eight it just depends mm -hmm. oh okay. yeah it just depends on how needy they are and stuff like that a lot of drivers and stuff like that how large are the zones typically like how far like max would somebody bike you know to deliver something okay if that base. yeah if at that it's usually the the companies that designate how far the areas are and stuff mm -hmm. like that especially if there's another franchisee close you know they'll split it up and stuff like that so it really kind of depends on the franchisees in the corporate or whatever and also what what they think you can reasonably do and get back yeah and that you know uh with the e-bikes they are spreading out their zones of deliveries and that mm -hmm. a lot of people have e-bikes now so they are spreading out their their zones of how far they're going and stuff like that ballpark average ah uh, probably two and a half miles two and a half miles yeah. is away so it would be like five miles round trip yeah okay um in like a six to eight hour shift how many miles do you think you'd bike mm, yeah it depends on the zones and stuff yeah. like that uh i always worked for base franchisees in the loop okay so i wasn't going that far in a lot of elevators for <laughs> detroit in a uh, lot of elevators so for the person in detroit that might not know what the loop is the yeah. loop is our downtown area it's our central business district yeah. so it's kind of where like the the l train goes around in a loop that's what's considered the loop so yeah. um he's saying that he's just kind of like hung around in the downtown, in the downtown yeah it was very you know so i didn't do a lot of miles but you know you're going up in elevator, but you know say like you know wicker park or wrigley you know you could do you know about 15 to 20 miles yeah in a shift or that you know the more neighborly ones and that yeah 
Uh, oh, okay, yeah. So we were talking about you know the base uh, being a 1099. Uh, also, just uh, check your data plans for your phones and stuff like that. That's another important thing for especially the apps and that the, you know it's going to be giving you directions and stuff like that mm -hmm. and it's also so that they can pull it up so when the customer calls in hey where's so and so with my food they can look at it so that's eating up your data and stuff mm -hmm. like that we had a, i knew a person once i don't know what they were they were somehow and it, it flipped their plan to roaming or whatever he had like a 600 hundred dollar phone bill <laughs> so just do you have an unlimited plan well I, yes yeah I, uh, okay. I don't know. Yeah, I Unlimited think most of it is typically around like what 150 or something, 100, 150. Uh, yeah, I've never gone over it, so yeah. I, don't, I don't know. So, just yeah, that's that's one thing to be mindful, just kind of check your plans or whatever mm -hmm. because you're gonna be they're gonna be pulling data from you like that, like that, you know, just to keep track of you and that. So, it's something to remember as you're starting out. <laughs> uh, yeah, it eats a lot of data. Cool. Uh, so there's a question uh, when you're getting off uh, to deliver uh, is bike theft or finding place to lock up quickly an issue? Yeah, yes, it is. Is bike theft an issue, Ace? Uh, it can be for oh, it is. people who are foolish. About foolish? Yes. Huh, interesting. I do have a, a section on you left here, <laughs> but I, I will, we can get to that right now. Uh, yeah, especially in the big cities and stuff like that, or even, you know, pe people, you know, smaller cities, bike theft, I think is rampant everywhere uh having a proper u-lock and not just the lot or not just the bike getting stolen but like anything that isn't you know attached to the bike yes I mean, lights lights get stolen all the time we lights. do bike light giveaways and we tend to really try to go find bike couriers because their lights are getting stolen just non-stop so uh the ones that we actually give away mm -hmm. you can clip to you yeah, and yeah. your delivery bags specifically yeah. so that yeah those are real yeah really nice yeah yeah but you're in a hurry you know yeah. take them off yeah. yeah lights uh especially what are called flipper fenders that are on the back the little flipper ones those are off all the time um say from regular people not not as much messaging if you have a quick release seat i've known tons of pe people who've got who, i don't know who steals quick release seats or whatever but i i've known tons of people i volunteer community back store and i have Tons of people come in saying, yeah, they stole my seat. And I was like, what? So they stole the seat post and the seat. So that's a weird one. So, <laughs> so yeah, locking up a uh, good quality U-lock, uh, multiples if you can. I'll kind of go a little in depth down the road. And then, yeah, just trying and, try and finding a proper place to lock up to is always difficult. And, uh, and I said... For a lot of times, especially the bigger cities, uh, theft is kind of, you know, of chance. You're in a, I would say, anecdotally, what happens to a lot of people is it's a place they go to all the time. And they know that I'm in and out like that. Ah, dude, you know, I'm behind, I'm running. Hey, I'm just going to put it, you know, especially buildings, I'm just going to put it here in the lobby real quick, you know, or I'm just going to lock it through the thing. They lift it over the pole. So that's where a lot of it is. You just don't get lazy every time you go to a place because... For most, a lot of people, have, they're like, dude, I'm always in and, in and out of that place. But I went, you know, for some reason, the person I was supposed to, they weren't, they weren't, they weren't answering the phone. The desk person said I could go up in the elevator. You know, I went up real quick, missed the elevator. I didn't get another elevator. So usually five minute trip turned into a 25 minute and I came back, my bike's gone. So just don't get lazy, especially so many places yeah it's like oh dude this is easy i'm in and out and then something happens and you're like oh my bike's just sitting there have you ever had a bike stolen i have you have yeah <laughs> i've had other big but, but other people's bikes stolen they've let me borrow their bicycle and, and that and i'm usually like very careful with other people's bikes and you know very respectful and then bam bike's gone so that's not a fun one and on all of those i i was i just was lazy. I uh, locked up, you know, locked up, and I was like, "Oh, I'm just gonna go up see the person. We're gonna go back down and grab the bike real quick." And then they were busy, and they kept stalling, and it was kind of all their fault. But if I uh, know it was not their fault, it was my bike. Yeah. What? <laughs> was. Anyways, I digress. We took a little tangent there. Yeah. <laughs> Silly. Just wanted it on video. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> um, keep on adding questions or anything as they come up. Yeah. Um, Cause that was, that was a fun one for me. That was perfect. I was going down that rabbit hole. Yeah. I, I, I knew exactly. <laughs> All right. Carry All right. On. So, all right. So that's the three types that are given that there are, you know, uh, instead of regular ones, there's a lot like, again, in Chicago, that the, the, the regular bike messenger services, they use cars, they use everything. You can have zero experience. You have a bike, you have a pulse, you can get in with them. There's more smaller niche ones that do a lot of lawyers, a lot of, you know, a lot of medical stuff where they really need to trust the, the, the courier. Those ones will pay a bit, little bit, little, actually a lot better, a lot more customers and stuff like that. So that you'll need some experience. Uh, Base ones, usually Jimmy John's, Pop Bellies, those, Dama. No, yeah. Got a pulse, you got a bike, you're qualified. And then the apps, yeah. I know the Domino's one specifically has a, like on their posters, like their hiring posters mm -hmm. that they're looking for bike couriers. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, it, <laughs> yeah, that's what they may say on the thing. They go, <laughs> it's, it's how desperate they are, you know. <laughs> and, then, and then the apps, you can be totally new at. And you can do those, you know, those, that's a good way to get in the door also to see if you like it and if it's kind of what you really think it is. So the apps are really nice to just get in and start, you know, you can do them as fast as you want. You know, you know, people, I know people just started out, you know, downloaded the app and just did like, you know, one delivery a night, you know, until they got, oh, you know, I think I can really do this stuff like that. So that so maybe try with one of the, the apps yeah if you're, you to, see about if you're totally new yeah I would, I would definitely you know download the apps and then just try it and see what you think of it which is pretty good so there's a question uh what's your loadout to carry those big deliveries any bag suggestions uh yeah i do have that also so let me go through a quick syllabus okay anyway, sorry yeah. no no so we have the three types i'm gonna definitely go through bikes i'm gonna go through phones i'm gonna go through locks bags and helmets all right yeah Let's yeah they're they're in that order. Or. Sure. Okay. Uh, next, we're just going to kind of go to bikes. Uh, I'm assuming everyone does have a bike. Um, ben was saying that he saw a person delivering which uh, the deliver with a Divi bike, which is uh, Chicago's uh, bike share program. And that I've known people who've done that. So if you don't have a bike and want to try it that way, I think that would be very hard. <laughs> but I know people who do They're it. They're heavy. <laughs> yeah, they're heavy and just the, the time constraints, you know, you got to dock them and that, but they also have e-bikes also that you, those, those you have no free period on the e-bikes or whatever, but the yeah, regular bikes they do. And, um, I remember they did, um, kind of news interview, uh, kid, you know, he's like 2021 20, who, who you, who had used the Divi the most, he had been the most user of Divi's like three years in a row. And it was a kid who was doing uh, all bike delivery with a Divi. So. Yeah, they saw like in the analytics that somebody was like a power, you know, user. Power, power And they were like, what's, what's going on with this yes. person? And then come to find out it was a courier. Yeah, yeah. the courier. So that's, that's pretty impressive. Cause it's you. Incredibly. Impressive. Yes, especially when he was doing it, you only had a 30 minute free window. It's now 45 minutes or whatever, but so you gotta take it from a station. You have to dock it at another station in under 45 minutes and you won't get charged or whatever. And he claimed that, yeah, he said he hardly ever got charged that he was that good at it. So that is amazing. But it's also kind of like AAA if your bike gets, you know, damaged or. Yes. It yes. Off, it's, a, so. it's, a, it's a great option just to have right that, you know, get a flat, something really bad happens. You can just pop over to one of those. So that's definitely. Look, if you want to look into that, if your town does have a bike share, that's definitely a good option to do. Okay, so we're just going to go to bike. So I assume everyone has a bike of some sort or whatever. Number one on the bikes is proper air inflation on your bikes, folks. So many people, so many people, just regular people, not just bike messengers, have their tires under inflated. Okay. And it just, it's going to slow you down. It'll, it makes you have a lot more flats than that, you know, and it's just uncomfortable. So definitely the side, on the side of your wheel, it'll tell you how many PSI there is or whatever. 
you know, if you can get, uh, I do recommend getting a small hand pump, at least so when you're messaging, you can have that. But if you can buy a floor pump that will have a uh, PSI gauge on it, that's definitely something really good to invest in, for about $20 or whatever. So having your air, proper inflation in your air, if not, you can go by any bike store, they will give you the nice floor pump to do, you know, do you know, do it, get it proper inflation. That is super important. I around well, Chicago, a lot of the bike shops they put them outside. Yes, so that you can from, just pump yeah. up your tires. You know, kind put of them outside. Another. Yeah, there's some public stations too, but they're pretty few and far between. Yeah, uh, if you work for a regular courier service, I uh, usually at the office they have a proper floor pump. A lot of the base places, the franchisees will have a floor pump, a floor pump there for you, which is nice. Again, if you're doing the apps or whatever, yeah, find out where your local bike store is. Definitely, you know, learn learn what your PSI is and get it to that. And then, you know, feel it properly inflated and you'll be surprised. You're like, dang, I was really low in that. And especially also, it, it helps mitigate flats if you have a proper, proper air inflation. Definitely. And especially if you're going to start doing messaging, you know, flats are probably the number one thing that's going to slow you down or stop you that uh the number two thing is don't go off curbs people don't go off the curbs okay <laughs> new people do it all the time all it's doing what is do you mean go off the, the, the sidewalk like curbs. right yep, off of it just oh, no. right, yeah just right straight off the curbs okay go to the end you know where the alley or the curb cut is do that but they look or, so cool when they do it yeah it's <laughs> yeah that's the good way to screw up your tires and you know, your tires wheels and just you know it'll get very expensive very quickly plus it's with it, easy very easy good chances your tires inflated you go off the curb you get a flat okay if you see that's one thing you will definitely notice about really proper uh bike messengers they, they step off the curb they're not on their bike they walk they go down onto the street then they get on their bike and then they go so that's another one that newbies or intermediate people to go off curbs don't do that okay and now so if he you, even wrote that in caps by the way just uh, i'm reading his notes okay he yes. wrote that in caps yes so those were the two i definitely wanted to emphasize on on the bike part now if you are getting into it or whatever is getting a proper fit hopefully if you bought your bike at a bike store or whatever they help properly fit it or whatever which is great that's I always recommend that. If not, you know, you've just had your bike for whenever, bought it at a big box store, or you know, got it from a friend, and that you you know you you just have it, you know, because hey, I'm just going from here to the store or whatever. Now it's your job. You're probably going to be putting a lot more miles on. It's, you know, it's definitely getting a proper fit, dialing it in, really important. If you can go buy a, a bike store, some will you know help help fit you. At least they, they may give you the basics or whatever. Oh, your seat's too high or, or your handlebars are too low. You can do that. A lot of places do charge for a fit now in that. So if you want to do that, that's great. Uh, if not, there's tons of YouTube videos. You know, a Bicycling Magazine, Peloton Magazine have also videos. So just, you know, look at different YouTube videos on, on especially handlebar placement, seat placement, seat height are another ones. You know, because if you're really going to start putting a lot of miles on Getting a proper fit makes so much of a difference. It's going to make your body feel better. Having a proper fit, you know, a lot more power, a lot more, you know, smoother pedal strokes. So definitely look into getting a, you know, uh, seat adjustment, handlebar adjustments, really good. Uh, ergonomic grips are really, really nice. They're a real cheap investment. They're like under $10. You know, if you just have regular grips, look into doing that. There's another one I would definitely recommend uh gloves if you can get bike gloves that's fine if not just any kind of gloves i would definitely recommend any kind of gloves you know just to kind of it'll it'll help your hands you know kind of softens the ride in that more than anything else wearing gloves you if you're getting into messaging a lot you're gonna have a lot of near misses with your bike all right mainly just people doing stupid stuff you you see it you stop I don't want to, I don't use the word crash or accident. I call them escapes. You took the brunt of it. 
I just cars or you missed the person or whatever. What's going to happen though? You're going down on your hands. Mm -hmm. Okay. Scraping your hands, getting rocks, getting glass sucks. And it takes forever for your hands to heal. Plus they bleed all the time and stuff like that. I never considered that. Yeah. Like that just like never crossed my Doesn't mind. Like, yeah. Why? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I said, uh, I, if, if you are messaging a lot of times, yeah, you're, you, you're slamming on your brakes to stop from hitting a pedestrian and you're zigzagging in to miss a car so that pothole. you don't get killed. Yeah, yeah. Pothole. Boom. And you're going down, you're going down on your hands. So, I mean, just even any kind of regular gloves. If you want to get bike, biking gloves are real nice, they're padded and stuff like that, but just, you know, even regular gloves or in the winter and then regular gloves, I'll usually just cut the fingers off. So, you know, you just have something it softens the ride. And then if that happens, it just doesn't jack up your hands and that. So I've had plenty of skates, you know, you jam your wrists and stuff like that. You can ride with it, but with your hands all scraped up, super hard and very uncomfortable and you don't want to work more than anything else. It just, It'll always crack and you're getting blood on everything. You're having, it's not a good look, stuff like that. So definitely wear gloves. Uh, with your bikes, if you want to add on racks, you know, racks are always good. And that, you know, there's a couple, uh, they call them pizza racks. If you're doing it for pizza, which are really nice, you can get really nice back rack. You can throw on a milk crate if you need, which is really nice. So those are kind of accessories. They, if you're going to, so the important thing will be your bag, which I will get it later. But it is it's very nice to have a rack, you know, a lot, lot of liquids, yeah, the, the water or whatever. It's always nice. It's always nice to have cases. Yes, cases. It's always to have more options or more free space to add or carry stuff than less. So if if you can, or if you have racks, which are good, a lot of people think, oh, I'm messaging, I have to have a rack or whatever in that. You don't, but they're always nice to have that so the, look into that uh, especially if you have a community bike store in your town or whatever a lot of them will sell used racks and stuff like that so they're pretty cheap to get they're a great thing to have with bungees very good uh the other thing fenders really nice most normal people who are doing it quality you can put fenders on their bike i want to get all dirty janky especially you know you <laughs> you're, you're gonna want to yeah, it gets very busy. Make a lot of money when the weather's bad. All right. A lot of people calling for deliveries. Having fenders on your bike is super nice. Keeps you clean, keeps you from being a lot less messy. So when you got to go into buildings or stuff like that, definitely look into adding fenders on. I think everyone agrees on that. I don't have fenders. All right. Leave me yeah. alone. Uh, this has been like an ongoing argument that we've had for years. No. Years. You're just wrong. You guys are getting a little behind the scenes arguments. They're like the little snippets mm. that are getting posted in. So apologies for that. Yeah. Um, uh, what else? Probably the only other thing, especially uh, on your bike, is uh, quality chain. Mm. If your chain's been a while or whatever, and, you, and you're really going to get into messaging, you're really going to get into biking, you're going to be biking a lot. You're putting a lot of stress on your chain Chain and that. New chain's $10. Okay. I've known tons of people who've had their chains snap on them, especially they're at a stop and they're getting ready to go again. They're out of their seat and they're just snaps, flip over, collarbones. So I've known so many people who've broken a collarbone because their because their uh, chain is snapped. Yeah. Also, it's easy if you're riding when you're fast and doing it. It snaps, you lose your balance, you crash. I've known several people who've done that and gotten hit by cars and stuff like that. So that is definitely, if you don't know how old your chain is, you can go by any bike store. They have a chain chain tensioner and a chain, and a chain length to see how it is, you know, and it's a good idea. I think it's a great investment. It's under $10, about $10. You know, if you're really going to get into messaging, new chain, definitely worth it. How many miles is recommended to replace a chain? Uh, different. So there are different qualities and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So there will be different mileage and stuff like that. Uh, they, they have a chain, it's called a chain checker. You need chain a checker. A chain checker. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and I said, you can go by any, and it's just kind of like a, kind of like a ruler or whatever that you can drop in. Mm -hmm. Uh, any bike store will have it. You can go by a bike store and Hey, you know, can you check my chain? See if my chain is stretched or whatever. 
they can check that because also your chain will stretch and then it kind of misaligned with your cogs or whatever you know so that's i would definitely also think about if you don't know how old your chain is or you haven't changed in a long time and you are going to get into messaging or if you just not even write a lot just having a new chain i said it's ten dollars and it's something super simple to do so i tend to go to beaches a lot and get a ton of sand in mine yeah that's not good either cleaning it cleaning it is also good <laughs> so said change it really cheap, you know ten dollars it's definitely worth it because when a chain breaks on you bad things can happen really quickly why do some messengers uh use fixies ah uh, because they want to be cool uh back in the day you know early 80s 90s fixies were kind of just uh what they used in the big cities new york city and stuff like that uh they were kind of cast offs you know especially uh Right now, fixing in New York City. New York City is very hilly and stuff like that. Uh, it's just also so you don't have to rely on your brakes for it. You know, just one less uh, thing to worry about maintenance-wise and stuff like that. Uh, and I said it just kind of became a fad. Uh, you definitely don't have to have a fixie or whatever to do it. You know, a lot of a lot of uh, bicycles will. It's called the flip-flop hub. One side is the fixed side. The other side is just a a regular freewheel so i would say it's just kind of turned into a fad and a lot of people will use it eats up your tires a lot because you're you know you're using your legs and the tire to stop so that's one to think about you know and it's really only good chicago's good because it's really flat fixies are okay to use but any other place with hills or stuff like that it's not also if you really are serious about it you know a geared bike's gonna get you way farther way faster so again you know see some of the newbies and the the younger fixie kids riding a fixie but uh pro messenger and someone who really it's their job they're gonna have a geared bike most likely you want to go they want to go fast they want to go far you know the more you can move the more you can do the more money you're gonna make so let's say fixies were just a bad that got very very popular um so you might i think i'm kind of reading your notes but with the the racks and you know like milk crates things like that what about trailers trailers uh yeah, yes and no so trailers are usually used for big orders and stuff mm -hmm. like that problems with those are you're going over a pop and especially also putting stuff on your rack and stuff like that the main reason well if it's non-food related, if it's food related, stuff in a trailer or on your racks, you're bumping up and down. It's becoming a mess. That's why people wear the messenger bags. You're putting stuff in the messenger. You're the shock absorber mm -hmm. for it and stuff like that. You know, yeah. Usually I said trailers and stuff like that are for big orders, catering and stuff like that. They'll put it in for certain kinds of stuff. They'll use a trailer. But for most others, yeah, it just, you pour and it just, it's a big mess or whatever, especially you got liquids or sauces, stuff pops open, oozes all over the place and stuff. I see like a lot that. of them locked up around Chicago. Yeah. 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 A lot of those are, it, it, uh, the one who uses it, it's a barbecue place. Yeah, the big barbecue place. Oh, interesting. Like yeah, so barbecue. Okay. Yeah. A lot, of, a lot of restaurants don't want you to use those when you're coming up to pick, especially the apps and stuff mm -hmm. like that, just because when the stuff finally gets to its final destination it's a big mess so but it can be an option in that but especially if you have big stuff you can do that so that's kind of about bikes uh the other, the other thing is uh definitely uh if you can get into it uh definitely probably your, one of your first investments is getting good quality tires is another thing because again flats are going to be your number one issue when you're out there messaging putting some good money into getting some quality tires. What would be good money? Uh, anywhere from like about 60 to a hundred dollars. For the set? Uh, no, for, for? Tire. Yeah, for a tire. So, you know, 120, you know, you can get them on discounts and stuff like that. Armadillos are good, Cater Skins, uh, Schwably Marathons are really good. Also, um, you know, forming a relationship with your local bike store or your community bike store, a lot of times, you know, they know you're a messenger, they'll give you a good deal. Cause they know you're out there riding a lot. You're talking to a lot of people, you're kind of like a rep form. 
or a lot of the stuff is kind of close out and stuff like that. You know, it's like, hey, man, yeah, we've had these in. We haven't sold them. They're great tires. Hey, man, we're going to hook you up if you want them. So that's another good option. I know when whenever we have like damaged things, like we tend to make sure that they end up with like couriers or like, yes, exactly. Bike shops and stuff. Yeah. So forming a relationship with your local bike sh shop mm -hmm. is very important if you're going to do it full time. Okay, so that's bikes. Our next one, we're going to go on to phones. Mm. Boop, 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 boop. I would have never considered phones as a category for this. Okay, yeah. yeah. Anybody else? Is that a surprise? Uh, again, as I said earlier, uh, check your data plans or, you know, your, your phone plan with your carrier, you know, for the apps and for, you know, the base. They're going to be pulling data. You know, they want to know where you are. For the apps, they're going to be giving you directions and stuff like that. So most people, I think, have proper ones, but just definitely double check. <laughs> That some people have had issues with roaming charges, others, you know, are, are prepaid ones, which can be very expensive. So definitely, so definitely look at your your data plan for whatever phone you have. And then number one in that, get a good phone case, okay? Because your phone is super important. You should, you know, be stopped when you look at your phone and do all, you know, one never does that. You know, you, you're gonna be right, you're gonna be trying to pull it out, you're gonna be doing this, you get to places you're putting it in, you're gonna be dropping it all the time, okay? Definitely invest in a good a good phone case, okay? OtterBox is a good one. Uh, there's lots of them out there, whatever works for your phone, definitely do that. Get something that's at least, at the minimum, water resistant, you can get one that's waterproof. I would definitely recommend that, but at least at the very, very minimum would be water resistant, especially if you're using the apps because it's gonna be giving you the map of where you're gonna go. The maps that they give you Uber Eats and, and Grubhub, eh, they're so so. I know better ways, but if you go out a route, it will let them know. Sometimes they'll have kind of panic attacks. Well, where are you going, you know, and stuff like that. Do they so, send people down bros about? Yeah, exactly. They do. Oh my god. They're not the best. So so definitely you're going to you're going to you, your phone is going to be out in the weather and you're going to be using it a lot. So definitely get a good phone case. On, on top of that, so I would also say, you know, you're using the apps or you're using other ones you need to uh, is a phone mount for your bike. Okay? That's another one. I would definitely recommend getting the higher quality ones. There's different styles out there for some that go with, you know, you can get a good quality case that's also integrated with the, the, the bike phone mount, which are really nice. So definitely look into those. There's many out there, you know, choose which is best for you. I know tons of people also who've gotten sh bought a shitty bike mount, you know, riding to hit a pothole, boom, there goes the phone flying and it's toast, you know. That's probably your, your, usually for a lot of us, the phone is more expensive than our bike. So, so definitely invest in a good case and then a good phone mount. Do you guys have phone mounts? I'm curious. Okay, well, yeah. Let's see. Yeah, phone mounts. Some of them will, yeah, mm -hmm. will also be an integrated a phone bag that has a, a clear screen on it is also another one. That's a good one too. So it doesn't have to be a mount per se. There's some that are integrated with like a little tool bag, which is good. Uh, the other thing is... Somebody says, no, they're too scared of the potholes, which is why they don't. Uh, uh, and okay. then somebody else yes. said, I had one, but always put it in my pocket because I'm afraid of it falling. Mm -hmm. uh, and then somebody else has one. And then I have a Chrome pocket for Jimmy John's. I don't need the mount. Okay, okay. yeah. Because he's going back and forth. Uh, yeah, so if you do get into it, I said, you know, most people put it in your pocket, but you're going to need, you're going to need it out for the directions or whatever. So buy a quality one, folks, buy a quality one. Don't, don't go with the cheapest. Look at the reviews. Definitely go through, look at the reviews, go by the, the phone stores or the bike stores. You know, I would spend extra money on a quality phone mount and phone case. Definitely. So that's very important. Uh, kind of, these are kind of basic things. Uh, definitely, if you can, write your contact information on the outside of your phone or somewhere on your phone. So if you drop it or whatever, you'd be surprised how, you know, I've, I've lost my phone, had my 
had a contact number on it and people have called it or whatever. It's kind of basic. I don't know if everyone out there, you know, if you dropped your phone today, right now, someone picked it up, would they be able to look on the outside and have a phone number where they could contact or, you know, say your phone was dead, you know, you're not using it anymore. It's in your pocket. You know, you drop it, they can't charge it up, you know, outside, you know, phone name, phone number, maybe your email address or your social security. I, social, security. I social security social media social media don't have your social media. yeah uh, uh another thing a lot of people will do is they actually uh make a burner uh email account with their phone number so you know whatever your phone number is at yahoo or whatever so you know if it gets lost you always check that one first so that okay then another one you lose your phone how many phone numbers do you know of other people? I know my childhood phone and I know my own phone number. I do not know anybody else's phone. Okay. Get you like a business card or whatever about the size of a business card. Write down, you know, your if you're working, you know, especially the, the you know, if you're regular, you know, uh, if you're working for a regular messenger service, you know, like the office number, you know, your credit card number or whatever, if you need those other people that you need to call, like, Hey, I lost my phone. Can you check, you know, can you go on the, can you go on the internet and check this or whatever? Or if it died for some reason, yeah. I know there was a time when like all the iPhone batteries were just dying halfway mm -hmm. through. through. Yeah. Yeah. iPhones totally suck in the winter still. So yeah, they'll freeze up on you that. So definitely, yeah, get you something about the size of a, a business card, right? Important phone numbers on there that you'll need so in case you do lose your phone. I usually put that in my wallet, then I'll do another one that's in my backpack. In case I do lose wallet or phone, those are usually drinking nights. So, <laughs> so it's always nice to have two options in there. Uh, the other super, super important thing, an extra battery pack. That is another super super important to have just because you're always going to need your phone charged up okay i said especially in the winter time i yes those are nice uh, i know uh tons of pawn shops have uh, battery packs all the time for really? cheap or what yeah i was always surprised yeah but you can get so that's a good place if you're just starting out and you need one a low end one or whatever i know they've come down in price a lot or whatever yeah. But definitely, uh, you know, you're like, oh, my phone's going to be all charged up. You know, I'm starting out with a full charge. You know, you're out working longer or that. I said, especially in the wintertime, iPhones totally, totally suck. It drains the batteries like that. So definitely invest in a battery, an external battery pack so you can keep it charged. Especially, you know, the apps or whatever. You go down on those, you're not working, you know. And the, so especially if you're uh, in the process of doing a delivery and it goes down. Oh, they I hadn't get, considered that. Yes, they get very, very mad. They will get, they, they can definitely ding you. They can ban you. They can stop you. How do they you ding know. you? But uh, just kind of, they're not going to give you like certain routes or they, they usually it's just a temporary ban. They'll just mm -hmm. say like, you know, two, three days or whatever, or whatever, stuff like that. So they can't ban you totally from the site. Um, if you're doing a regular one or that, I said, there's a lot of, a lot of apps that the regular messengers companies are going to WhatsApp, Telegram, Signal. So those are different ones you may have to put on your phone, stuff like that, that they use. Uh, weed dispensaries, they use Signal, Signal app, which is a good one. I like that one. So different places may use different apps, messaging apps. Some just use group text or whatever which totally gets annoying because then your phone gets out to tons of other people and uh, it can be very transient, the bike community, and then someone has your phone number. So <laughs> that's kind of nice. I said, if you're a regular one, uh, they, they, may, they still use a lot of radios here in Chicago and stuff like that. They're big, bulky. They do work. They do trust you enough. You will get, a, you will get to take the, the radio home, which is very nice. So then you don't have to come into the office all the time. So that's a good one, but definitely uh, always keep your phone charged, always have an extra battery pack, and then always have a, you know, an extra charging cord with 
not just the USB, but with the plug, so you can plug it in somewhere also. That's very nice. So that is one, two. Would any of you had considered that you needed to plan through phone logistics to be a courier? I'm curious. Yeah. Um, but as they're typing. Yes. So those are my phone notes. Yeah, we're on to napkin number uh, five. Uh, uh -huh. I think so. so the first was text and messengers. We did bikes. We did phones. We will go to locks now, which is really, really important for being a messenger. And then another one, this is a side note also on it. If your bike was stolen right now, do you have a current updated picture of your bike? I don't know that. Do you have the serial number for your bike right now if your bike got stolen? So definitely tonight, if you don't get an updated picture of your bike, you know, a lot of people have adds, added stuff since the last time they had a picture, you know, or they don't have a very good picture of it at all. They have to go through all their things or whatever to find it. You know, up against the wall, a nice white wall, a good front picture, front picture of it, a good side picture of it, and then your serial number. Keep those in a good place. I think you're actually in the photo of my bike mm. that got stolen. No. Yeah. I, I was in I full circle. locking it up. No, you're actually in the photo that I have on Bike Index. Oh. Yeah. Oh, I really yeah. <laughs> Okay. Um, so uh, Jacob mentioned he... Uh, his bike had been stolen years ago. I made a Google folder, oh, specifically for bike photos and then one of the serial numbers. Yes. Okay. So definitely do that. And then also, bike gets stolen, file a police report, okay? You need to file a police report. So if you do find it later on and you're like, hey, I'm going to call the police, first thing they're going to ask you, if you have a report, you don't have a report, they're not coming out. They're not going to do anything for you, Okay. Most of the times when you do find it, it, the bike was actually sold on to an innocent person or whatever. You know, it's like, hey, that's my bike. And they're like, no, -uh. I bought it from Joey down the street for $60. You know, it's like, no, you know, and then it's like, well, prove it. Well, one, I get these pictures and two, I got this police report. Usually if you have the, I mean, even just, you know, uh, take a picture of the police report after you have it, have it on your phone, you know, hey, look, I got the picture. I got the police report. Most people will give it up or also like I said when you call you call call the cops and that's what they're gonna ask no police report it's not even worth it for them so they're not gonna come out and you can also register it on bike index yeah um, bike index yeah there's several places where you can register your bikes because bike shops will check for yes. you know ones that have been sold to them so yeah. it might be a couple of owners down the line right. yeah. you know that it ends up kind of cycling its way through like mm -hmm. a, a used bike shop yeah, but definitely have pictures of your bike and write down your serial number. If you don't, a lot of people don't know that. Yeah, a lot of people, oh, I don't know my serial number. It's like, Ugh. that's not good. And then people have, I I seen one on Facebook, like uh, like about six months ago, a guy put up, he had a picture of the bike, but he but then he had like a little addendum. Oh, but I have a rack on this, I have there. <laughs> he had like nine different things that he had added to it. It's like, like can you, it's like, you, not even the same body <laughs> so definitely an updated picture whenever you do that so that's good all right and then on to you lock or locks in general obviously i would recommend having a u lock big brands are abus is really good uh kryptonite is really good uh on guard is really good so definitely a quality u lock is very very important and kind of going back to the other things i said don't get lazy okay lock it up lock it up properly okay stop that's not funny he's still okay so definitely do that um usually a brand new ulock uh like abs kryptonite will come with two keys split them apart obviously you know tons of people who lose their keys and have kept them together i'll usually um a lot of them will get like a little coily wristband so you can keep the one key on your wrist. Most messengers will do that. Keep the other one in the backpack. Uh, I'll usually order. It. There's a little code on on the, the keys. You can have that, and then you can call. You can uh, go online with like Avos or Kryptonite and get extra keys. So I always 
Uh, on guard's a really good one. They give you like six, five keys. I think they give oh, you five. Yeah, wow. it's just really nice. I said I like to have at least three. So obviously the one I use, one in my backpack, and then one at home or whatever. And that most will only give you two. They said you you lose your key when you're out at work. All right, well it's in my backpack, so I got that spare or whatever, you know. But for some reason, you know, a lot of times, you know. People will, uh, you know, put the key like, oh, I'm going to do something. Put the key on their backpack or in their backpack. Their backpack gets stolen. Mm -hmm. You know, he's gone. Both keys are gone. Your bike's still locked there or whatever. So we have a question. Mm -hmm. um, can you get ticketed for parking bike in certain places if no racks are around? Uh, it, technically, you can. Uh, in Chicago, I've seen a few places with planners and stuff, and they'll say no. You know. Do not park your bike here and stuff like that. I have not known of any like police coming down and ticketing in it. I've usually known building owners or whatever will have their maintenance dudes come out with a angle grinder and cut it off. And then they'll either take it back in with them or whatever, you know, or they do, or they'll just leave it out there unhooked or whatever, walk it over to the building or whatever. So it, you, you, more going to be not ticketed it's more the building owner or the place just cutting it off right then and there and what, that's usually going to take them a little while to do so uh, i mean can the angle grinders are pretty fast now but no I mean, but i mean yeah. like if you can kind of tell that somebody just locked up and they're going to be gone type of thing yeah but there's totally douchebag building owners who will <laughs> totally yeah no they right. they're, yeah they will definitely send the maintenance dudes out to cut them off and stuff like that right. yeah so Good to know. Yeah, but I've known in Chicago, I've not known of anyone actually ticketing a bike for being parked somewhere. Uh, I know they tried to not really, yeah, kind of ticket. They put nasty notes on in Millennium Park one time when the concert was going on, and people there all the all the bike racks were full, and so people were kind of locking up all over the place, and they were like, "Hey, you can't do that." And they were putting notes like, "We're gonna come," you know. So that's that. Uh, extra keys, I said. Yeah, put, you know, so obviously split them apart, put one in your backpacks, really good. Also, a uh, good quality folding lock is really nice. Those are, are really nice to have. If you're going to get into messaging, uh, I would say a minimum of two locks to have with you. Okay. Just one's not going to cut it, you know. And it just, it's a one, one, it's a super deterrent to bike seats, you know. You got either two U locks or whatever, or you know U lock with a folding, the folding, or with a U lock with a quality cable is always good. That's another thing: is people attempt to steal your bike, they they don't, they're not successful, but they mess up your bike. You know, mm -hmm. totally ding it up, dent it, mess it up. You know, and it screws up your bike. The more locks you can have, the better. It's better, you know. I said I usually minimum two. I usually have three. You do, you know, you lock the front wheel, you lock the back wheel, then have a folding you lock, and that 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 will get me into places then to lock the bike itself. Uh, if and then if you are locking, if you don't have that many, definitely go through one of the wheels or whatever, so they can't ride off with the bike if they do steal it. If, this is my opinion. If they're going to steal the bike, at least they're going to have to carry it away. That's me. And that. so definitely, if you can. Also, a U like you know, people, oh, you know, U like forty dollars, gonna last you twenty years. You know, ten. You know, it's totally worth it. If not, in the end, you know, you can always sell the U like if you get out of messaging or whatever. People are always looking to buy quality U locks and stuff like that. So you know, I bought it for forty. You know, five years later, you sell it for twenty. Totally worth it. Trust me. Getting your bike stolen or getting your friend's bike stolen totally sucks. So definitely look into I said U locks. Uh, also the quality quality folding locks. I said they're just kind of like like zigzags things. Those are really nice also to have. I would also buy I said a quality one. There's a lot of fake cheap Chinese stuff out there and that. Go with the big name brands. You know Avis, Kryptonite, On Guard. Uh, any bike store will sell quality U locks and folding locks. Go buy from a bike store, support your local bike stores. Uh, if you have quick release on your wheels, 
They make uh, what are called locking skewers, which are another good investment to have. You know, they're only like, you know, $15 or whatever. Saves you from getting a wheel, especially in Chicago. I know tons of people to get their wheels stolen. Especially a lot of people have, you know, quick releases on higher end stuff. Have some really nice carbon fiber wheels stolen. So it's another thing super quick they can do. Happens a lot. So definitely if you have a uh, quick release on your front or back, you can, there's several different companies that also make locking skewers and stuff like that. Any bike store will sell them usually. Definitely do that again. There's some kind of fake knockoff ones. Chinese don't don't go with those. You know, go with the quality name brand bike store ones. Definitely good. Uh, easy place. Oh, um, uh, air tags are also another thing a lot of people may be interested in. Chris has bought some air tags. We're gonna try those on the bikes. Those are kind of newer ones. I had. Um, Heard about uh, out in California, person to put an air tag on, actually at San Francisco area. They were able to get their bike back. It, the, the more of the story was about they knew where their bike was and the police, it was a, it was a suburb of, of San Francisco. Police were like, we're too busy. We're not going to come out or, you know, in the the main gist of the story was, the guy, you know, the guy had found his stolen bike was like, hey, I want the cops to come. The cops were like, no, nah, we're not coming. You know, we got other stuff to do or whatever. So he did, come, you know, he did knock on the door, confronted the person, got his bike back. So something to think about. Uh, I think they're relatively cheap. What, $20 or what? Like 30 30 But you can get a four pack. So okay. it brings the price down. Yeah. So, you know, maybe go in with some friends or whatever. We split a pack. Yeah. So, uh and that so definitely that's a new option coming out there if you want to do it i think that's also 30 dollars kind of lower end there are some there's gps enabled stuff that's kind of pricey or whatever uh i said this is uh, a different new thing coming out so we'll try that but definitely doesn't replace quality u locks you know one lock at least at the minimum depending on how nice your bike is or whatever but definitely i usually two or three uh, also kind of a misnomer is, oh, I don't have a quality bike. They're not going to steal it or whatever. Tons of people steal crappy bikes and they ride crappy bikes around till they find the nice bike and then they dump the crappy bike and they get, so don't think that, you know, oh, you know, my, my bike's not that good. They're not going to steal it. Definitely can happen. Uh, and the number one is like they said, uh, don't get lazy. You think, oh, I'm just popping into this place to grab this delivery, this order. Boom, you know, you walk in, someone runs, hops on it, and they're gone like that. So definitely don't get lazy and uh, get some quality locks. So we've done types of messengers, bikes, we've done phones, we've done locks. We'll go on to bags. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah. Drink water real quick. Uh, messenger bags, I mean, you're starting out using the apps or whatever you know just your regular backpack can work if you're working at a base you know for jimmy john's fox trot or whatever usually just a regular bag will will do some of the places will have branded bags that they want you to wear and stuff like that so that's nice um a few of the regular messengers will have smaller ones that they have uh that um the side cross bags that go like that are definitely just for regular messaging. They're really not good for food, food orders or stuff like that. So, you, so you'll see a lot of day day people, regular messengers wearing a side cross one because they're carrying a lot of papers and stuff like that, which is it's good for and stuff like that. It's not so good for food. So definitely, you know, uh, especially you're starting out or even, I mean, you see quality messengers or whatever, uh, have backpacks now. You know, they're not, I see, I see people try to use like duffel bags or whatever, or kind of gym bags. You have to hold it here or hold it on the side. It's not good. You definitely want to, especially in Chicago, really, you want two hands on, on, on the handlebars. Okay. So definitely make it a backpack of some sort. Don't try to start with like a duffel bag or a gym bag. Get you a backpack. Uh, side cross bag. Yeah, that's more for regular paper. Uh, all right, 
a messenger backpack. Uh, there's good quality uh, Chrome trash bag. There's a whole bunch out there that just do specifically messenger bags. If you're going to get into it, I think it's highly recommended to get one. They can be pricey, you know, 200 and up. Why do you want to do it? One, they're totally a better quality. They're totally a better quality. Get into messaging. You're going to be thrashing your bag all over the place, picking it up, dropping it, this, getting it caught on stuff. Quality, quality bags are totally made of a higher quality. Uh, lots of room in them. Lots of room. Okay. They like said, you, you know, you're going to pick up stuff. I've gone to some places and just they pack the way they package the stuff is like in big boxes and you're like, really, people? You know, and so a lot of a lot of food places they're just they're getting a lot better with packaging stuff, but a lot of them weren't weren't big on on uh they were not even big, but you know, they did they did pick up or whatever, but they never did, you know, because of the apps now every everyone can be a delivery store or whatever. They didn't know how to package it right and stuff like that, and you're going in. It's just totally, and it's like, wow, I need a lot more room. And sometimes, you know, you just got a big ass order. The more room you have, the more, you know, the more you can carry, the more you can carry safely, especially with the backpack. They have a lot more room. Also, almost all of them, you know, totally waterproof, okay, which is super important too. You know, you pick it up at this place, hey, it's not raining, start riding, starts raining, it starts getting a downpour. At least you got it waterproof, you know. And if you, uh, especially with proper messenger bags, you know, if you fold them up and lock them, lock them properly, they're totally waterproof. You know, usually where you have an issue is you left a part open or you didn't lock it properly like you should have, but they're definitely waterproof. Uh, they will also have better straps on them and they're designed for a better, better fit, which is super important. If you're going to be doing it for a long time, you know, you get in business and carrying stuff on your back, it's never fun, you know even just, you know, doing it for the day, you know, heavy stuff, you know. So the big messenger bags are really designed for you to carry on a bike. It's so really good. if somebody's starting out and, you know, obviously the the big, you know, messenger bags are the, the primary one that you want to get, mm -hmm. maybe the best opportunity is to start with the apps, kind of see what you like yeah. and don't like and kind of how things need to be and then you know what you probably want to invest in yeah it, yeah that's right? what i was gonna say i mean that's kind of one of the things about the the messenger bags mm -hmm. is they are kind of pricey so if you are going to get into it uh i you know i think i think that they're uh, a good investment especially them being better quality again also you can almost always sell a used messenger bag also if you think you're going to get into it uh you know call uh you know not really the big regular messenger, like easy messenger or whatever, but the small ones, call them up and hey, does any, any messenger have, you know, any old bags that they want to sell? Even an old quality messenger bag, there's still a quality messenger bag, you know, that also go on, you know, a lot of, um, you know, cities have Facebook groups for fixie kids and stuff like that and other biking things. Just go on there. Hey, anyone got old messenger bags or whatever? Or there's also tons of people, oh, man, I'm going to be a badass messenger. I'm going to get into it. I'm going to buy this $400 bag. You know, and they do it for a couple of weeks, and then it gets cold, and they're like, <laughs> eh, that's okay. And they have this nice bag, you know, sitting there. So tons of people, you know, that's another option. I said, you know, if you're just starting out, also you can go check out uh, thrift stores and stuff like that. You can usually, you can find, you know, Maybe not like a full-on proper messenger bag, but a backpack that is bigger than the current one that you own, which is really nice. I said the biggest backpack you can get, it's definitely worth worth buying and stuff like that because you want both hands on the on, on the handlebars and stuff like that. Um, so that's it. Uh, the apps, they may give you, they, they have some branded bags, Uber Eats does, Grubhub. They're okay i think they make you buy them now or yeah buy them. they used to they would not give them, you, you bought it then like you did 10 apps 10, 10 deliveries in a week you got it free or whatever i think they've gone away from that or whatever i don't know what the new offers are for new drivers but check into that i they're they're okay i would i would i'd probably not pay more than like 40 dollars for one if I was going to do that, you know, but also they don't force you to, you know, they, they would like for you to. And 
uh, how would I say? They, they definitely encourage it, but they're, but they're not mandatory. They're definitely not mandatory. Uh, also, just have a lot of extra bags with you too. You know, you know the different cloth bags that you go shopping with. Maybe a big blue IKEA bag or whatever. You know, just have those. Strap those to you know your back your back rack or bungee it or whatever. Or you can just kind of throw it in your your regular backpack. You know. For some reason, you don't need them, but you need the space in there. You can take those out and just hold them on or put them in your thing. So definitely grab a couple extra bags. Take those with is another great thing to do. It's always I would rather have too many, too too many. You always want too many bags and not enough. Uh, that thing you might want to think about uh, taking some Saran wrap with you, especially for drinks and stuff like that. Uh, I use it a lot for the what you know for the Starbucks ones wrap the drinks up in that which is nice also if you're getting drink orders or whatever they're the fountain drinks just double check them and make sure that the top's on them or whatever so many times they get the drink orders and it's barely on so if you had moved it it would open up and spill it all all over the place so definitely do that and then I know a lot of people carry with saran wrap with them so just wrap them up if they need to uh, a lot of places are going to like bottled water or bottled sodas just because I've had so many problems with that. But yeah, if you definitely have fountain drinks, definitely double check them, make sure they're on there. And I said, it's nice to have some saran wrap with you. It's good. Would anyone have thought of that saran wrap? I wouldn't have. <laughs> yeah. Spill a drink in your bag and you, you, know, <laughs> you, you ideas come quickly in that, so. Uh, how do you put the drinks in a bag without spilling them on a ride? I got one drink once and spilled it. <laughs> LOL. <laughs> yeah. Uh, again, yeah, yeah. I will usually, again, I'll have a, an outside bag if they are drinks or whatever. I'll usually just put them in an outside bag or do that. Again, especially being new, that's something you need to be very conscious of when you're getting getting new stuff. Uh, drink holders, uh, I know a couple people have made with kind of the, the like political signs, plastic stuff and drink holders, made their own special carrier. That's another reason it, it is nice if you do have uh, like a front rack on your thing so you can kind of put them in there or kind of wrap them up. Rubber bands also with a little extra bungee or just string. Another good thing is to have a, just regular string. with. It. I noticed the box that you delivered yeah. the other day had string on it. I was yeah. like, why did he have string with him? I'm like, yeah. he must have planned ahead and had yeah. the string with him. Yeah, no, I, yeah, tons of string is also another one. I said, um, you just got to use your best judgment with drinks. There are definitely a pain in the ass, you know, so definitely, um, also, you know, if you think you're going to have a problem, it's the place you're taking it from, ask them maybe for an extra bag, a lot of places they'll have extra bag, extra plastic bags and stuff that they can put them in, or a lot of those places will have saran wrap, and they'll just like, here, look, we'll wrap it up, hey, can you wrap this up, dude, I got like six drinks here, dude, and I got only two hands, and I got to use one of them to ride the bike, so that, uh, I said, you know, because of the apps and that, a lot of, a lot of, uh, restaurants have become aware of how hard it is to carry drinks. So a lot have switched over to bottled drinks, which is nice. Or they definitely they definitely can relate to you having problems, and they will definitely try and help you out. So that's that's really good. Some drinks are yeah, – so that's all on bags that I can think of. Yep. Does anybody have any more questions about bags before we move on? Um, we can circle back to yeah to. anything we also went through and when you circle back or whatever I'm um, just kind of the basic stuff so I was kind of going through oh any brand suggestions for bags <sighs> I mean I would just I don't want to say a certain one just because uh, you know chrome trash bag uh, trash bags another one I, I would just go online and and I would rather have you do the search, you know, but look at, at uh, messenger specific. You can just Google it or whatever. And there's tons of brands out there. Again, it's, it, you know, just one that I would like, you may not like. And that, uh, and also just cost too. Yeah. Like cost is a down. Yeah, definitely one. And to be honest with you, I have never bought a brand new messenger bag. I've always bought used ones from. I have no so many bonehead <laughs> messenger <laughs> or tons of little fix the kids. They're all ready to get into it and stuff like that. And they buy themselves a $300 bag and they use it for one summer and they're done. And 
I'm the ace man for a hundred bucks. So <laughs> I said, that's, that's what I look at. So, so at the end of the year, when it starts to get cold, definitely start hunting for bags is what I'm hearing. Mm -hmm. Kind of like, ah. you know, the people that buy grills at the end of the yeah. year, because people return them to the store. Yeah. Uh. Or yeah. And uh, especially, yeah, it's kids, the university, a lot of university kids will buy them and stuff like that. Use them for a bit. And then, yeah. And when the time comes around because of this. So I, I don't want to give us uh, specific brand names just because, you know, what I like, you may not like or whatever. Just uh, do your research on it and stuff like that. Also, if you're in a big enough city that does have messengers and stuff like that, go by them and ask ask a messenger what they use and stuff like that. Uh, also, a lot of the bike stores will carry messenger specific brand backpacks and bags. Go look at those. And uh, if you can also, yeah, go by the, the bike stores because there at least you can, you know, try them on. They said also I'm very long and kind of lanky, you know, I'm, I'm taller than most people. So, you know, my fit, I like a really loose fit. Tons of messengers are like, I'm really tight. I'm, I'm like, how do you do that? But said, you know, it's your own personal style or whatever. So I hope that helps out. But yeah, definitely if you, if you are, yeah, ask other messengers or go by um, uh, bike stores or whatever they will carry you. Uh, I think like Chrome also has like standalone stores. You can go to, I think Chrome has their own, a couple of them have their own stores that you can go. If you can try them on, I would definitely do that. So that's bags. Helmets. Dun, 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 dun. Uh, if you're a base rider, you're with Jimmy John's, Pop Valley's, Fox Trot, you're probably going to have to wear your helmet. Okay. So. I know I don't all, all the Chrome stores closed. I was actually thinking oh, that too, because they closed the one in Wicker Park. Okay. So apparently they closed a lot of them. Okay. Well, that's all right. Back to helmets. Okay. Uh, helmets. Yeah. If you're a base, you're almost always going to have to wear your helmet. And uh, that's in the insurance region, stuff like that. Like the company that's hiring you, their insurance company is requiring it? Uh, I don't know. I just know at <laughs> the store, like, you got a helmet, you got to wear it. I, I know tons of bass drivers, especially little fixed kids and stuff. I mean, they have it. They get out the store. They ride one block. They take it off. They snap it to their bag. They ride around, do deliveries. They come back, take it off, put it back on, snap it, and just why? I also see tons of, tons of messengers downtown. If you work for a, a regular messenger service, if you're going into the office, you usually have to put your helmet on. Or you also, when you're getting hired, they, they ask to see it. But I, I also see tons of messengers, you know, just have it hooked to their backpack or whatever. My opinion, everyone's opinion is different on helmets or whatever. I usually don't wear one, but but if I do have to carry a helmet with me, I am going to wear it. So that's my opinion. So take it for you will. I, I mean, uh, to me, it's very odd to see someone, you know, having the helmet back. If you have to carry it with you, you might as well carry it on your head is my thinking. And that uh, the apps uh, usually when you go in to get hired and stuff like that, they ask to see it. Hey, you got a helmet? Yeah. Some won't even ask you to put it on. You know, <laughs> I've known some people. Oh, it's like a kid's helmet. <laughs> I can put it on and stuff like that. So you usually ask to see it, but because of the apps, you know, you're not going back in or whatever, so you don't have to. You know, especially the apps are really nice. You know, you're out. Hey, you know. You make a few bucks tonight and turn it on and go. You don't have your helmet. So I uh, definitely don't know if a lot of people know this. Uh, helmets do have a lifespan on them. So you're only supposed to use uh, different styles, a different one, but usually only like for about two years and stuff like that. And then the padding and stuff kind of just degrades, I guess. I almost said disintegrate, but degrades or whatever. And they want you to, you know. For full maximum effect, you should have an up-to-date helmet and stuff like that. So you might want to look at that if you, you know, if you want to get a good quality helmet. Uh, a lot of also um, write your name and emergency contact phone number put on the outside of your helmet is very, very nice to have. Um, any allergies, any medication is also put on the outside of the helmet. It's really nice. Okay, something happens you're conked out at least they can see that 
Hey, little Christina. Look at that. It's your mom's phone number. I've definitely picked up bike couriers from the hospital. Yeah. And I've known and I've I've known tons who, yeah, they were just out, either out of it or totally out of it, you know. So having having something so the emergency personnel, the ambulance can call and say, Hey, this person's in the hospital and they're out. So can you come down? You know. Hopefully it'll never happen for you, but that is definitely something to have on there. Uh, mainly, uh, well, for how much? Uh, it's about all I got on the helmets. I said, yeah, if you're based, you almost always got to wear whatever. Uh, for regular and apps, again, usually when you're hired on, they want to see it or whatever. Work for regular messenger service. The, you know, you got to go in the office. So you usually have to put it on. You get chewed out or whatever and stuff like that. So back in the day, some of the regular ones used to actually send people out, out to see if they, uh, the riders were wearing it or whatever. But because of the way employment things are now, the tight labor market, they usually don't do that anymore. But <laughs> you usually have to see it. And again, for most of them, it's they, they just pass the buck. It's for insurance reasons. They're like, hey, insurance, you got to wear it or whatever. So if you've got to carry it with you, I would say wear it. At, and we're on to the last napkin. Yes. Which uh, definitely drop comments or questions if um, if we haven't covered anything so far that you want answered. Mm -hmm. uh, the last one is kind of tools. So or extra stuff to have. I said because you're out there, you're kind of on your own. You know, you don't get an office, you don't have a thing. Having a uh, having some basic tools or whatever can make a, from a bad day into just at least it was an okay day instead of a totally unproductive shitty day. So it's it can be that it can be that close or whatever. So definitely le learning a few basic bike mechanic skills or whatever will definitely go a long long way. Uh, and obviously the first is uh, tires and that I said that's going to be your number one thing is getting flat. Uh, if you can learn how to fix a flat, there's tons of videos and stuff like that on different ones. So I don't think it's really that hard. That's me or whatever. But at the very least, if you're not um, carry an extra tire, uh, an extra tube with you. So at least when you go by the bike store or whatever, you have that specific that specific uh, size. You say you do. Uh, um, most of the supply chain issues are fast, but uh, back when COVID was hot and heavy, there were certain bike sized tires you couldn't get. Tires are kind of stretchy or whatever, you know, so they could they can kind of filter them in and out. But it's definitely if whatever size is on your top on your bike to have an extra one, a brand new extra one is nice. Especially also you have deep V's on um, what you know on pre pre pressed uh, ones and that you know pressed or your Schrader. You know, you press the, the these, they may have a very, very long uh, valve stem so that. And then also uh, the presses are the skinny ones and the Schraders are the fat ones. I've known people, you know, they go in and they have Schrader, which is a very tiny hole. And all they had was fat Schrader ones that couldn't fit it in. So at the very least, if you can carry your, that your, your size specific tire is very nice to have. Um, uh, an adjustable wrench is always easy because you know you're out there riding stuff rattles loose or whatever. I used to have an adjustable wrench. Mm. I wouldn't like. Well, I might have an extra. <laughs> we can get you one. We can start a GoFundMe. We can start a GoFundMe. I'm just not letting this go down. Yes, I, I was like, I need this back by the yeah. end of the ride. Yes. And then I saw him drive away with it. Yes. Uh, so that's uh, adjustable wrench is very nice. Uh, Allen keys. Are another one, which are kind of the little diamond things. Uh, Allen keys are all, uh, definitely another one. Uh, nice to have. Uh, there's multi tools you can get, which have, have a combination of stuff on them. And uh, you sell multi tools, right? Mm -hmm. um, you can get a bike lane uprising multi tool if you would like. Uh, that's a, those are really nice to have. They'll have a lot of different bike specific things on them. So it's kind of a all in one chain breaker, chain breaker, all in one kit. 
those are definitely nice to have. You can go buy a bike store and get those also, or bike data bars. Uh, mini bike pump. That's probably the. We saw those too. Oh, no, okay, no, do you? Yeah. I didn't know that. All right, mini. Yeah. If if any if I said anything you don't have, the, the one thing probably the numero uno one is a mini bike pump. Have that, okay? Or you know, just tires a little low, you run over something, you got a pump and go, pump and go. You can do that. Then also mini bike pump. If you can get a floor pump, I said they're about twenty dollars different. So you need to sell floor pumps. Yeah, I'm gonna store them at your place. <laughs> That's the wrong answer. I'm just telling you to have yeah, run your okay, business. Okay, so. let's move forward. All right. Anyway, floor yeah. pumps definitely either about twenty dollars or whatever. I would definitely recommend getting one for your house, or if not, find where your closest bike store is. Always go by, you know, maybe every three days or whatever. Definitely keep keep your tire pressure up. It's one ride is so much better, and it definitely will help minimize flat. Um, good rain gear. If you can get you some good rain gear when uh, bad weather is out, especially rain, pe people start calling. You, you get busy, you make a lot of money if you have good rain gear, especially, uh, you know, the rain. Uh, buy an extra size too big or whatever, so then you can put winter gear under. So, you know, I don't really have like winter specific gear. I just have like winter clothes and then I'll just wear my rain gear on the outside of it. So definitely look into that. Um, keep an eye out, especially when you're at thrift stores and that. A lot of people give away good rain gear, you get good quality stuff. Uh, if you do get rain gear, uh, another one is a poncho. If you're only gonna get one thing, I definitely think a poncho is much better. It can cover you and then you can put it over it and then you definitely cover your legs or whatever. So good quality poncho is nice. Um, uh, as we said earlier, for your phone, an extra battery pack, definitely going to need one of those. And then just a, another cable cord, always great to have. Uh, if you want a music speaker, obviously no earphones. I see tons of people messengers with earphones in. Don't do that. You can get, you know, you can get them now pretty cheap. Bluetooth enabled, uh, speak music speaker phones you can hook on or whatever. Almost all of them are Bluetooth enabled, so especially if you've got to take calls or whatever. If you're working for a regular one, you know, they're calling you, hey, no, you go here instead or whatever. Those are nice to have. Um, Bluetooth, uh, yeah. That. And then uh, just um, kind of towards the end here is just making a relationship with either your local bike store or there's a lot of, a lot of places that have community bike shops. Uh, those are always great. They're always usually looking for volunteers. You can learn a lot of bike skills there. You can usually get a lot of great deals on either slightly used or very little used equipment, especially, you know, you're not sure if this is going to be, you know, which a career or whatever, or, you know, you just want to get in it a little at a time. They usually have a lot of great stuff that on the cheap, you know, I said slightly used or whatever. A lot of them are uh, community stores very experienced about stuff, so can give you good advice. And then also <clears throat> just your local bike store, man. Bike mechanics are some lonely ass people. So definitely go by the bike stores. You know, if you can create a relationship with them, said, uh, you know, hook you up on deals. They can kind of jump the line for you, which is very, very nice. In Chicago, our lines are long for maintenance. I mean, I'd say right now they're getting into the like multiple weeks, multiple months. Um, like it's, it's getting yeah. Yeah. Tough. On stuff, so. you know, you know, you have a relationship with a bike mechanic and he, he knows, you know, this is your money maker, you know, Hey, you know, I'll stay late. I'll do it for you. Or, you know, I'd actually have one of those that's going to, for another customer, but they're an a-hole. So we're going to hook you up and just tell me that, you know. So definitely, you know, uh, you know, creating a relationship with your local bike mechanic at your local mm -hmm. local bike store is great. And uh, also check out community shops. Uh, they got a lot of good quality stuff. And uh, I have something I have. There's a topic that you have not mentioned um, that I think is probably important. Mm -hmm. Bathrooms. Bathrooms. Yeah. I'm a guy, so it's much different than for me, for you. That's why they made an alley. That's why they made an alley. So not a problem for me. Uh, I want to say, uh, you're doing the apps. Obviously, most places that are doing food delivery will let you use their bathroom, which is really nice. 
you're doing base, you usually go from the store out or whatever. So you have that regular. Uh, it's, uh, you know, you usually go to a few different places. Uh, I would say most places are accommodating. It really sucked. It really sucked when COVID was going down. Tons of places weren't letting people in. Tons of people weren't letting use bathrooms. I will definitely agree with that. Now it's, uh, I said, I'm a guy. Oh, there's an alley. Works for me. All right, moving on. I mean, work, uh, you know, uh, so. Does anybody have any uh, any additional questions? Is there anything that we haven't covered? Was this helpful? Uh, was there anything surprising that maybe you didn't anticipate we were going to cover? Uh, you mentioned getting off and walking into buildings. Is it worth investing in those clipless uh, flat shoes for walking? I uh, uh, I th I th I think it is. Yeah. Two clips? Well, I I do uh, a couple. Of my, I know I do have more than one bike, so mm -hmm. I do I do have some. That, I've never seen you with clips. Yeah, I I uh, a couple of my messenger bikes, my my fast ones that I really want to make money. I do have clips or whatever. Uh, it's kind of up to you. A lot of people with the bike shoes and they get used to walking in them like that and stuff. So um, I would say it's kind of your preference or whatever. I I can walk duck style with with the clips in or a lot. Of, I mean, it's really nice. A lot of a lot of the shoe companies are doing the ones that have the clipless and stuff like that. So there's a lot more options now. So. I would say whatever works for you, whatever you feel, would probably be my non-answer. So, what, yeah, answer. whatever, it's, whatever. Again, again, I, I, I'm very hesitant to say what works for me or what I like will not yeah. maybe work for you. Everybody's so different. Yeah, like, and uh, I would say yeah, uh, especially if you if you know people messaging who are similar to you or and stuff like that. Uh, I said. Um, most of my clips and my, my bike shoes and stuff like that, Chicago is, is very lucky. has a lot, like a four or five really good community bike stores, especially shoes and stuff like that. Suburban dads get into it. And buy, I wear a big shoe, buy really nice, super pricey stuff, wear it for, and then it gets cold and they give it away. And, the, you know, you get really good quality stuff. We actually, you know. there was just the garage sale at BFF Bikes. Oh yeah. I mean, exactly. there's some really nice stuff that goes through that one. Yes. Um, so if there's ever like the community garage sales that take place too, those are 10, those tend yes. to be really nice because it's just people that are like, well, I didn't like it, but it's definitely a really nice thing. And I want it to go to a good home. I just don't want to end it up yeah. in the trash. So yeah. like, it's really not about making a profit at those things. People are just trying to make sure that they find yes. good homes. Um, and, next question is, where should I be looking if I'm trying to get into more professional bike messaging in Chicago? In Chicago? Uh, I would look at the, like, uh, like Snap's a good one, uh, Four Star, uh, like Foxtrot. I, I would just uh, definitely go with the, the more, um, I, I guess the smaller ones, I would say, you know. Why smaller? Uh, cause they're more like, uh, I, 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 I want to use the word niche, but not niche, but they're more focused on like, like offices, especially like lawyers, banks, medical, they want to know that they're giving stuff to a quality responsible mm -hmm. person, not some guy who turned on it, turned on the app or whatever. So they have a really good reputation. Yes. They have a really good reputation and stuff like that. So definitely look at the smaller ones. I would, I would say. Next question. How does bike messenger pay work, hourly delivery, et cetera? Okay. So almost uh, like if you're working for a regular one, it'll be usually a kind of a portion. You, you get an hourly pay and then you get also how many deliveries you do pay, you know? So there it's, you get hourly. So in case you didn't get any of that, but then the more you do, the more you're going to make and stuff like that. Uh, base riders and stuff like that, usually it's an hourly wage plus whatever tips you get, uh, especially because the apps are coming. Oh, sorry. Uh, especially because the, the apps put a lot of pressure on, you know, a lot of people are just going over and messaging doing the apps. 
So especially a lot of the, the base stores have, have had to up their hourly rate, which is really nice. But uh, so for them, it's usually a pretty decent w rate. You are technically considered a tipped employee, at least in Illinois. So they can give you, I think tipped hourly is like seven bucks an hour, but I don't, no one, no one pays that anymore. It's usually about 10 to $12 an hour. Then plus whatever tips you get, which you either be cash or on a credit card and they'll give it to you that way. Uh, another great thing is, uh, especially the franchise things, you know, almost all food places, so free food, whatever, which is nice. So I said the, the pay just varies. It's almost all predicated on though, how, how much you do deliver. The more you deliver it, the more you're going to make. So the faster you are, the yep. faster your bikes are, you know, in top shape so, yeah. and all of that. All of that, yeah. How fast you can find a place with yeah. directions. Directions, <laughs> yeah. Or just, yeah, you, you, uh, learning your directions, learning where stuff is. I said, especially uh, on the apps, you know, they'll send you down. Oh, wow, I could go down this wrong way street or whatever. But no, the app wants to send me three. You know, it, you're going a long way for one block or whatever or cutting across a park is nice or going through an alley, you know, cuts five, six minutes off, you know, learning your geography and learning, you know, just your way around definitely will improve your earning potential. I've had couriers uh, say that they were going to meet me somewhere and uh, they'll be like, I'll be at your place at seven minutes. And it's like seven minutes is a very specific time yeah. to offer up as an estimate. And you know what? They were there in seven minutes. Mm, yeah, I was like, well, I'm gonna test this. Yeah. I said, yeah, especially, uh, especially that, yeah. And if you know, you know, shortcuts, you know which way to go. Hey, I can go under this underpass here. Hey, there's a big, you know, I can go along like lakefront here. Or you know, construction. Construction, like yeah, that. yeah, yeah. A lot of you know the constructions, close the streets closed down. Eh, not for me, it's not. So, something to think about. Any more questions? Has this been helpful? Do you guys feel more confident with making your next step decisions? Very helpful. All right, cool. Um, awesome. It says yes, I am. Cool. Um, all right, so so next up, there might be you know some questions that you have from you know here on out. Uh, we're going to try and get this video. Um, saved and we're going to try to put it on YouTube so that one, you can share it, you can go back to it. Um, but then also if you have questions that you end up thinking about, you know, later on, or maybe you start and then you're like, oh, well, I didn't think about this. I really wish I had an answer to that. Um, we'll have Ace actually monitor that and he can actually reply to you in the comments. So if you add comments, we'll remind him regularly. Yeah. I'll give you his phone number. No, 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 no. <laughs> we'll do that. Still, I've got another one of my bikes stolen, and I will give out your phone number. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, so, you know, we'll try to at least kind of circle back to this. Maybe things don't get answered right away, but um, yeah, I'd have no problem yeah. answering your questions or any anything else knowledge that I can give you or help advice. I'm totally down. I mean, it's. Uh, we got an uh, extremely helpful thanks for putting this on um but again i know i told you for a long time i was like i think people would really benefit from learning from you yeah. so thank you for um, putting yourself through this um there's just a lot of stuff that you know og bicyclists and couriers and stuff kind of take for granted that yeah you know, people that are just starting out might not know so I think that there is a, a welcomeness and just a, a willingness to share some of that knowledge. But sometimes you just kind of you get so familiar with what you know that you forget that other people might not know that. No, that is true. Yeah. That is true. Yeah. Cool. All right. Yeah. Thanks, everyone. I hope it was informative. Thank and, you. Uh, good luck out there. Be All safe. Right. Bye. Bye.